Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another press conference. Going to get stuck into it in a minute. Those buys are over, but we were still caused by a bit of pain. Fife, that injury, Heaney to start the weekend. Our Supercoach week was bookended by a bit of frustration. A lot of people have Fife and Heaney. Pretty much anyone worth a pinch of salt will have those two guys. And they both didn't complete their games, but the kicker with Fife is a lot would have had him as skipper. And I was one of them. Having said that, I was surprised to see that I still went up in rankings and still scored okay. Um, I knew I was having a reasonable week, but when your skipper scores 40-odd or whatever it was, you know, I, I had the VC. I mean, I may as well show you now. Um, I had the VC on Dangerfield. You know, I thought that, well, this loads. I thought that would be a reasonable option. Would have liked the 130. I mean, 118 is one of those real awkward ones. It leaves you going, gee, I'd be happy with it. And I have stressed in the past that you should always be conservative in the VC. You don't want to be greedy because your captain can get injured. Your VC might have scored 120. You don't want to get too greedy because you just never know what can happen with those guys who are actually your captain. And, and it happened on this occasion. It was disappointing, frustrating. We scored 43. Before I go through all the other scores and stuff, shout out to the young fellow who said g'day out at Lammy's to uh, Shorty on Sunday. Thanks for saying g'day, mate. I was uh, just out enjoying a bit of the nightlife, seeing a bit of Teddy Cream on the Sunday evening. And, uh, yeah, as I often say, it's always good to have people come up and say hi and talk a bit of Supercoach. So hopefully you had a good night, mate. Hopefully you had a reasonable week in Supercoach. Um, comment away if you haven't already. Um, That'd be much appreciated. But, yeah, look, my side went pretty well, to be honest. You know, barring Fife, clearly, you know, the, the back line was beautiful, went fantastically well, um, really pleasing. Hurley came in my side, so I'm nearly complete, complete. Um, and look at that, Tom Mitchell, 181. I ummed and ah, do you go Mitchell VC, do you go Dangerfield? In the end, it was a bit of a toss of the coin, really. There, there was no real reason behind why I went Dangerfield. I just thought he might be really due to go bang and smack out a big score. Mitchell, again, delivered a 50-touch game. It's unbelievable how he does that so many times, and it's such a difficult feat, but he just racks up the ball. The only player struggling is Dustin Martin in that midfield, which continues to baffle me. Surely he's going to be an absolute bargain next year. It'll be great to hear why he's actually struggled post-season. It's always kept under lock and key throughout the season, but I'm sure at some stage over summer we'll hear about this injury he was struggling with. There was talk about a calf concern. You know, There'll be some reason as to why a player of Martin's standard is not scoring like we know he can. Um, Ahern scored quite nicely on the bench. Doubtful I'd need to use um, him for money purposes, but... You never know. I mean, potentially I might need to because the talk is that Heaney is going to miss. So, you know, I, I would prefer a Hearn in over Liam Ryan. So that's probably what I'd be doing there. And and look, the rucks went extremely well. Went bang, bang, 140 plus on both. Got to love that. Robbie Gray, Smith, you know, so-so scores. Guelphie struggling. Um, and McLean was really good. So... You know, clearly that one player I need to upgrade is Guelphie. And it was the first time he scored under about 60, I think. Most of the season he's been quite easily between 60 and 75. I'd have to say on, on every occasion, I would think. Um, and what's my keyboard doing? I, I, I'm just curious into this last forward line position. I think there's so many guys that are scoring well, but I don't trust them. These informed guys that are clearly playing good footy, like Westhoff has in the past, Darling has in the past, you know, those types of players, they're on the numbers the top defend uh, forwards to bring in, but I just don't trust them. I feel as if they're the sort of guys that you wanted to take a punt on and start with, and now you've got the reward. I feel as if there'll be a levelling out period where they average sort of not average numbers, but so-so, a bit below what they've been doing. I, Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I'll have a bit of a closer look in terms of what I do. But, yeah, I've got a bit of money in the bank from memory. Yeah, you've got 160K. 
and you know obviously there's not many trades not many trades so I wouldn't have to do a downgrade because at 305 I can reach fairly far and Guelphy should still have one more price rise so we'll have to wait and see what I do there there will be something to think about no doubt about it. I mean you get this point you really want to just finish off your side and have all those players scoring well and potentially scoring 100. So, yeah, look, overall, I'm fairly pleased. I said through the buys, you know, I struggled, but I felt that once my team came together and they're all on the same park on the same round, I think they can score really well. But that was the case. I said I could get a 2,400. I think with a little bit of luck and a reasonable captain, I wouldn't have been too far off the mark. I think, you know, that's unlucky with five everything being equal and you get a captain who scores about 110 then that prediction is looking reasonable but um you know we're probably a bit light on in terms of bench coverage you know the back line's pretty light the forward line's pretty light so you just don't know what's going to happen there hence i'll have five trades remaining to use as pure emergency trades i don't think i'll have the option of doing a luxury trade um you know dustin martin to someone i, I don't think i'll do that because you just never know when Dusty's going to find form or anyone's going to find form. But what you do know is that you could be hit with an injury at some point in time. And and you might have gone Martin to Josh Kelly or something like that. And you've gone, woohoo, that's going fantastic for a month. But then you get hit by injury in the last month. Last round comes around or whatever. And you need that one extra trade just to save you a donut. All of a sudden, that luxury trade is looking a bit more like a stupid trade. So I'd be more inclined, particularly if you've got about a handful left, I'd be more inclined to hold on to them at this stage of the season, all judging on what sort of backup you have on the bench. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm pretty keen to watch a bit of Wimbledon. That starts in about 45 minutes. So I'm pretty buggered, to be honest. Had a long day at work, a couple other things to attend to in the morning. And uh, as I said, I was out last night, so I didn't get the most amount of sleep. I've ever had on a Sunday night, but it was bloody good fun. But um, yeah, so I'll leave you to it. Hopefully you get around the tennis. Hopefully you get around a bit of the Tour de France as well. It's a great month of sport. And obviously we love watching our footy too. So I'll be hoping my cats can respond on a Thursday. Are we Thursday? I'm pretty sure we're Thursday night. Richmond, Adelaide are Friday, aren't they? So hopefully we can turn around because the boys are struggling. And um, anyway, waffling now. So enjoy the night and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.